Good morning and welcome to our service this morning, which is the first Sunday of the Epiphany and a celebration of the baptism of Christ. It's good to be with you this morning and like I, like you, am back at home as we are locked down together. On this day, when we read about and remember the baptism of Christ, Jesus calls us out of darkness into his marvellous light. Washed clean by the waters of baptism, let us pray that we may live the life to which he has called us. Our first hymn this morning is Hail to the Lord's Anointed. So we come to our time of confession. We're using a Kyrie form of confession this morning so that you can repeat with me, Lord have mercy and Christ have mercy as we go through. 
Because God was merciful, he saved us through the water of rebirth and the renewing power of the Holy Spirit. But through sin, we fall away from our baptism. Let us return to the Lord and renew our faith in his promises by confessing our sins. God, be gracious to us and bless us and make your face to shine upon us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May your ways be known on the earth, your saving power among the nations. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You, Lord, have made known your salvation and reveal your justice in the sight of the nations. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. We know that the God of love forgives us and frees us from our sins and offers us healing and strength by his spirit. In the name of Christ, our Lord. Amen. And so we pray the collect for today, the day on which we commemorate the baptism of Christ. Heavenly Father, at the Jordan, you revealed Jesus as your son. May we recognise him as our Lord and know ourselves to be your beloved children. Through Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Amen. Our first reading this morning is from Genesis chapter 1. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning on the first day. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second reading this morning comes from Acts chapter 19, and it's Paul in Ephesus. While Apollos was in Corinth, Paul passed through the inland regions and came to Ephesus, where he found some disciples. He said to them, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you became believers? They replied, no, we have not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. Then he said, into what then were you baptised? They answered, into John's baptism. Paul said, John baptised with the baptism of repentance, telling the people to believe in the one who was to come after him, that is, in Jesus. On hearing this, they were baptised in the name of the Lord Jesus. When Paul had laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them and they spoke in tongues and prophesied. Altogether, there were about 12 of them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Margaret is going to bring our gospel reading. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptised by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed in camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptised you with water, but he will baptise you with the Holy Spirit. 
In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven. You are my son, the beloved. With you, I am well pleased. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. May I speak in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And so we find ourselves in lockdown once again. This time last week, those of us who have any connection with education in our country were beset with anxiety about the possibility of our children or spouses having to return to the classroom with infection rates higher than they'd ever been. And so there was quite a lot of uncertainty around and now we know. And sadly, we are back in lockdown of sorts once again. For all of us, I know this brings further uncertainty in all sorts of ways, but especially for parents and teachers and students. It's worrying too how much pressure our NHS is under and how challenging the situation is for our doctors and nurses and other healthcare workers, all of whom are in our prayers. But we celebrate the fact that the vaccine is beginning to roll out in our communities. The Gospel passage this week is an important transitioning point in Jesus's life, which I think is why it comes now on this, the, the first Sunday after Epiphany. This is the first time that we meet Jesus as an adult, and it's a moment when God spotlights him in front of the crowds and makes it known that he's really delighted with all that Jesus is and all that he will be in the next stage of his life journey. Both father and son are aware of how difficult that journey might be in parts. I wonder, what, I wonder when was the last time someone said to you, well done, or told you that they were proud of you? I wonder when the last time that happened for any of us. And what about our young people in particular? These have been really tough times, but it seems increasingly that we have become a nation of grumblers. And I count myself in this too, partly because there's been plenty to grumble about. But yesterday I came across a list of some good things that happened in 2020. For example, did you know that the ozone hole over Antarctica closed? that whales came back to the Atlantic Ocean after more than 100 years, that the number of victims of terrorism decreased for the fifth year in a row, that Saudi Arabia and Palestine banned child marriages, that the elephant population in Kenya doubled, that polio was eradicated in Africa thanks to vaccination, and that the vaccine against COVID became the fastest developed vaccine in history. It's true that the world is not what we thought it would be today. In no way did I think last March that we would still be in some form of lockdown come January 2021. And the realities of worshipping today are far from what we would normally expect. And we've had to adapt to a new way of being together, apart. But even in this, we have learned how to do it. Our inbuilt human capacity to rise to the challenge and to change and adapt to our changing circumstances has come to the fore. So may we hear God say, these are my children with whom I am well pleased. Moving on from the story of creation in Genesis, we know that in some sense, going wrong has been essential to evolution since the beginning of life. For its random or seemingly to us random changes in the development of successive generations and of our world, which have allowed new things, new species to appear, new life and new growth. Perhaps you too watched with horror as Sir David Attenborough revealed to us on Sunday night in his programme Perfect World 
the vampire finches on the Isle of Wolf. Nothing in creation stands still or is fixed. Everything is fluid with this inbuilt capacity for change and development. This is creation. This is evolution. This is the story of who we are, not just as a human race, but as a dynamic created order. The flood narrative, the plague stories, the Old Testament, the incarnation, all find their expression in who we are today as we face up to the reality of our current story and work through it together to bring about change that will enable us to sustain and to grow and emerge and recover. And this comes not from governments making rules, but from all of us taking responsibility for ourselves, using the gifts that we have, looking after one another and above all, loving one another, knowing that we are all beloved children of God, knowing that we will all make mistakes along the way, but allowing ourselves to be forgiving of others as God is forgiving of us. And we need to be forgiving of ourselves. So I wonder if you could go back to last year's you, pre-pandemic you, what would you say to them? And what would you like next year's you to be able to come back and tell you? As we transition into a new season and the next stage on our perhaps still lengthy journey out of the pandemic, we can trust that God continues to speak words of love and affirmation, both in these moments and those yet to come. We are his children with whom he is well pleased. Amen.
if we were in church on this day when we celebrate the baptism of Christ, we might somehow affirm our own baptismal promises. And so I'm going to invite you now to do the same with me. The response uh, mostly is simply, I believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Father, source of all being and life, the one for whom we exist? I believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Son, who took our human nature, died for us and rose again? I believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God and makes Christ known in the world? I believe and trust in him. This is the faith of the church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Margaret is now going to lead us in our prayers of intercession. Great God of all time and space, fill the church with such joy in believing that all Christians overflow with love, compassion and humility. Let us walk your way and live your life. As we think of John the Baptist, and your baptism, we thank you that you are with us all the time, weeping with us wherever there is sadness, and yet strengthening us with your Holy Spirit. We pray for all clergy, Archbishop Justin, Bishop Rose, Archdeacon Joe, and Estella, our vicar, Guide them with your Holy Spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Christ, there is sadness in the world, so much illness, grief and pain, and a feeling of helplessness. We pray for all hospitals, consultants, doctors, nurses, all frontline staff and all who are in hospital. Help us, Lord, to help wherever we can. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we pray especially today for America that there will be reconciliation wherever there are disputes. We pray for all schools universities, colleges, and especially those students who are anxious over exams. Strengthen all who are making decisions. And bless all children, Lord, who have to go online and find it so difficult. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, light of the world, as the Magi followed the star with courage, perseverance, persistence and faith, may we follow you in the same way on our journey of life. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Jesus taught us to call God our Father, and so in faith and trust we pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. So as we come to the end of this, our time together in worship this morning, I'm going to offer a blessing.
May God, who in Christ gives us a spring of water welling up to eternal life, perfect in you the image of his glory. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you this day and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.